We're at something rare, Robert. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we see a lot of cemeteries out in the middle of nowhere. And we have a lot of people to ask, why does someone do something to clean that place up? Well, this is one rare occasion that we have visited a cemetery in Talbot County, Georgia, that I'd say 15, 20 years ago, it looked like that. You see that? Yeah. That's what this cemetery looked like. And some of the family members stepped forward and did this. Wow. It looks good. And, and again, like Dan just said, we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing to see it like this. What's that smell in the air? Is that some kind of flower blooming? There's something blooming around. Oh. Oh, there that. they are. Yep. See, this was the old home place here also. Okay. This is known as the Steed Place. And uh, I guess they have, apparently, it looks like they have squared off what is the Steed family cemetery. And it's all surrounded by private property, of course, now. When, when I was uh, a kid growing up around here, and I remember this was out in the middle of the woods, and it was terribly grown up. And one time they clear cut this and cleaned up around it. And over in here where the graves are now was just completely covered in garlic. It was, it was almost waist high, wild garlic. And I think pe people long ago held some kind of belief that garlic warded off evil spirits or something. But I don't see signs of any garlic now. I do see lots of other bulb flowers coming up, but nothing like it used to be. Concrete. They poured it with concrete and covered it in gravel so they don't have to worry about anything growing up in here like it was. It's interesting to see the different types of grave markers in kind of the era yeah. um, like this. We, I've seen this a lot in old churches. Um, well, and of course all cemeteries, but specifically in an old church cemetery, I saw a bunch of these style of poured cement. Now this one's marked 1878. It says, in the memory of, I believe that's Josephine. Yep. It says, in the memory of Josephine Adams, born January 4th, 1855, and died... April the 28th, 1878. If I can make out the epitaph. It's a sleep in Jesus, peaceful rest, whose waking, whose waking, I'm losing it there now. Whose waking is Supremely blessed. No fear. No foe. Is that shall? Shall die that. I can't tell what that is. Stand back and look. No fear, no foe shall die that manifest something. I don't know. Right? It's an interesting epitaph. It is an interesting epitaph. I don't think I've ever seen that one. No, I don't think so either. This lady right here, Eliza, wife of Cater Pierce and daughter of Mrs. Mary and Philip Steed. Uh, she was a steed before she married Mr. Pierce. Mr. Pierce is buried right here. His name says uh, Mr. Cater Pierce. It has quite a bit of epitaph on there. Mr. Cater, Cater Pierce, born February 3rd, 1832, died June 16th, 1911. A kind and devoted husband and father a faithful soldier of the of the 60s 
faithful soldier of the 60s, first lieutenant of his company, ever loyal, kind, and cheerful. Interesting. So, Civil War veteran, right? Yes. Confederate veteran. Huh. That's neat. Now, if I'm correct, this Mr. Cater Pierce had a son named Cater Pierce, and he had a son named Felix and a son named Willie. And Felix lived in Waverly Hall. And Felix is my brother-in-law's grandfather. You know my brother-in-law, Larry? Yeah. This is a, this would be Larry's great-great-grandfather. And grandmother, great-great-grandmother. Two of her tapses. Memory of Eliza C., wife of Cater Pierce and daughter of Mrs. Mary and Philip Steed. Born January 26, 1836, and she died March 26, 1894. She smiled farewell to earth. Heaven returneth now our treasure. Earth, the lonely casket, keeps and the sunbeams love to linger where our sainted mother sleeps. This probably should have been read more poetical than that. But, yeah. but I like how someone thought enough to mark the unmarked graves. Yeah. At least with a name and date of birth and date of death. Absolutely. Honestly, had not even thought about this cemetery in years, and my sister asked me the other day, had you been to this one? And I said, I don't know. We'll have to check into it. And I had not thought of this place in forever. Uh, very peaceful here. It is very peaceful. Let's see. This is... This is Maddie Arvella, daughter of A.H. and M.E. Teal, born May 16th, 1883, and died September 28th, 1906. This is a precious one from us is gone, a voice we love distilled, a place is vacant in our home which never can be filled. God in his wisdom has recalled the, does it say Boone? The boon his love has given. God in his wisdom has recalled the boon his love has given. And through the body, and though the body slumber here, the soul is safe in heaven. So this must be her parents here, daughter of A.H. and M.E. This is Mary Emma. And Asa was a uh, Confederate soldier. And she was, and you see how she fits in here. She was a steed. Uh -huh. Married to Asa Teal. It was Company E, 9th Georgia Infantry, Confederate States Army. Now we'll look at this one. This is a little Clifford, daughter of V.A. and L.J. Steed, born March 31st, 1895, and died January 26th, 1896. Sleep on in thy beauty, thou sweet angel child, by sorrow unblighted, by sin undefiled. This was um, put up here in 1990, Laura Josephine Carter Steed, June 25th, 1859 to January 31st, 1941, erected by Madeline V. and Benjamin Carter Finley in 1990. She lived a long life. This lady right here, I've heard of her all my life. Her name is Miss Gussie Steed. I actually never heard her called Miss Sander. Everybody called her Miss Gussie. I, I didn't even know she had married at some point. But anyway, she died in 1950, it says. Uh, when Daddy first started working in Columbus as a young boy, he rode the bus back and forth from here to there. And she worked in Columbus also. And every day he got on the bus down there where 
you know, a country's barbecue is located in the old bus station. Yeah. And every day he got on the bus there and would come home. And she did as well. And he said that every day he would get on there and there would only be one seat and he would get to it. And she would always tap him and say, Eddie, please go get me a newspaper. And he would have to get off the bus and go get her a newspaper and then come back and his seat would be taken. Right. He said it happened every day. He said if he went and got her a newspaper ahead of time, that she would say, Eddie, will you run over there and get me a box of Kleenex <laughs> or will you get me some some Band-Aids or something? Right. Every day she found an excuse for him to get off that bus and come back. Oh, man. But apparently she was, uh, I guess she was the daughter of, you see where her parents might be? 1885 there's yeah. I wonder if maybe some of these folks over here uh, Sarah Steed who was born September 6 1843 and died July 31st 1891 it says mother and devoted at the bottom and, uh, James Steed who was a mason born November 6 1842 and died July 13th 1917 ever faithful and she was born in 1885 so they they would have been um in their 40s if that's their that's yeah. her mother yeah. i guess so i really never give it any thought i don't know who her parents or how which ones they were unless there's one mention here a laura josephine Carter steed died in 1941. i don't know oh uh, but anyway you remember me telling you about the lady that I bought the first Victrola from that I got that yeah. that they uh, kept a bucket of hog slop on it? Mm -hmm. uh, that Victrola had originally belonged to Miss Gussie. Oh, really? I still have it. And uh, she lived in an old house, old home out here somewhere. The house that she lived in is gone now. But the Steeds used to own all of this land out here. Where was the home site at in relation to where we're at? I think the house here was right out there. But the house that she lived in was on the highway. Gotcha. Out here uh, close to the peach orchard. Let's look over here. We've got a, another child buried here. Beulah Steed, who was born May 28, 1889 and died April 19, 1890. It says Innocence at the bottom of that. Philip Steed, who was born in 1872 and died in 1895. I think this was one I wanted to look at this too. It's another one of these poured concrete markers from 1881. It says in memory of... Dan, I think you need to call expert on this name here. Is that Lonidas? L-O-N-A-D-U-S, Lonidas. Yeah, Lonidas. Infant son of L.G. and E.T. Jenkins. Born December 22nd, 1881 and aged two days. And I'm not going to attempt that epitaph because the weather's certainly taking a toll on it. Unless you can make it out there, Mr. Dan. The, the little babe has, hmm, no. Nope. Little babe has gone to rest. Yep. To. To walk with Christ forever blessed. Hmm. I'm take a look at these. There's just names and like Dan pointed out just a minute ago, uh, modern markers placed here for people who are buried here would otherwise be unmarked. This is a pretty neat cemetery, again, out in the middle of nowhere, but I love how well kept it is. 
Let me suppose the reflectors are full on each side of the gate. I don't know, but imagine coming out here at night and seeing just two red glowing uh, orbs over the cemetery. Maybe those took the place of the garlic. <laughs> That's it. Maybe so. But very well kept. Very well done. Whoever. Uh, someone fixed even it. fixed up the gate. Yeah. There. With a walkway all the way around it. There it is. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed seeing the cemetery. I think that uh, it's really cool to be able to see one that's so well kept out in the middle of nowhere and uh, know that it's unlike so many that we see. This one is well protected and safe for many years to come, I think. So hope you've enjoyed and we'll see you next time.